tubing. This series of six quick tech snacks is designed to remove that nagging fear that you're missing some important detail about what's involved in building a custom loop. You essentially have two decisions to make when selecting tubing, thickness and materials. The choices are purely a matter of looks and practicality. Tubing has no meaningful impact on cooling performance. Let's talk about materials. Flexible tubing, also known as soft tubing, is just what it sounds like. It's important for it to be made of the right type of stuff, but you can get it from a reputable water cooling supplier and you're good. Flexible tubing is not as good looking, but it's easier to use. Just don't bend it too tight and kink it. If you want hard tubing, you'll run into PETG and acrylic. PETG is easier to cut and bend. Acrylic prides itself on its superior crystalline clarity. There are some more exotic hard tubing materials out there, such as copper. If you choose hard tubing, you're going to have to research how to cut and bend your chosen material. There are plenty of guides out there for that. Thickness. Tubing thickness is measured by two numbers, OD and ID, which stand for outer diameter and inner diameter. The most common thickness for soft tubing is 10 over 13 millimeter. ID OD. This is sometimes called 12.7 by 9.5 millimeter ID OD, or using imperial measurements, 3 by 8 by half inch ID OD. The most common thickness for hard tubing is 10 over 12 millimeter ID OD. This is often just called 12 millimeter OD, or imperial 7 over 16 inch OD. Tube fittings will tell you the OD and ID they support. If you stick with the most common tube thickness, you can be sure that your preferred flavour of fitting will be available for your tubing. The different styles of tube fitting are just different balances of convenience, strength and looks. There is no wrong choice, as long as it fits. Just one PSA, extra thick soft tubing is harder to kink. Ok, on to the pump. The pump pushes the liquid around the loop. The pump needs to be positioned physically lower than the reservoir. When you pour liquid into the reservoir, gravity needs to be able to take it all the way down to the import of your pump. This is because water cooling pumps are water lubricated, which means you can destroy them very quickly by running them dry. That's why having a reservoir is so practical. You can fill the reservoir, then start the pump to push some liquid around your loop, and you have time to turn the pump back off before the reservoir gets empty. Repeating this until liquid gets all the way around the loop, all the way around the loop, and starts flowing back into the reservoir, is the basic principle of how you fill a loop. You do also need to get the air bubbles out of your loop before using your PC. Removing trapped air is an essential part of filling the loop, but I don't want to use your time up with that right now. I recommend watching a variety of loop filling and draining videos before building your first loop because this is where custom cooling can be a bit of an art form, and you'll benefit from getting multiple perspectives. There are also a lot of pump and reservoir combos available, and even pump and water block combos. If you do use one of these, just make sure you put it the right way up so that the pump is at the bottom. Which pump you choose doesn't matter much. To a point, higher flow rates yield better temperatures, but any modern pump will provide a high enough flow rate for all but the biggest and most complicated custom loops. If in doubt, you can't go wrong with an official D5 pump. At the end of the day though, your choice of reservoir and pump is almost entirely a matter of convenience and style. Next episode, water block and radiator.